Hi guys, this is Harsh and today I'll be talking about OpenStack cloud architecture. But before we start, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. OpenStack is a free and open source software platform for cloud computing. It is mostly deployed as infrastructure as a service where virtual servers and other resources are made available to customers. OpenStack has a modular architecture where we have different modules or open source projects which are from different vendors but all these projects are connected to give us this infrastructure. In the conceptual architecture we can see that there are nine different components or projects and how they conceptually interact with each other is shown here. Let us first understand what these components provide us. Among all the components or projects, we have two categories core components and supporting components, which provide core services and supporting services respectively. In core services, we have NOVA, it provides compute services, that is, it provides virtual servers upon demand. It automates and manages pools of compute resources. Then we have Cinder. It provides block storage service for OpenStack. It is designed to present storage resources to end users, and these storage resources will then be used by NOVA. The short description of Cinder is that it virtualizes the management of block storage devices and provides end users with a self-service application programming interface to request and consume those resources. Then we have Swift. It provides object storage. That is, the data is stored in the form of objects. So here, it is not like traditional file systems as everything is stored in the form of objects. If you want to modify something, you will need to pull out that file, modify it and then push it back again. This seems tedious, but it is best for storing images as objects or streaming videos as no modifications are required. Swift provides replication, which is not provided by Cinder. It stores data across various places and Swift also provides scalability, that is, you can increase or decrease storage as per your need. Then we have Neutron. Neutron provides network connectivity as a service. It is a system to manage networks and IP addresses that can be scaled and it is driven through APIs. Users can use these APIs and create networks for the different user groups or different application. In supporting services, we have Keystone. Keystone is a central component for authentication and authorization for all the OpenStack services. For authentication, username and password credentials, token-based systems, or Amazon Web Services login credentials are used. Along with this, it also provides a catalog which shows a list of all the services deployed in the cloud. Then we have Glance. It provides image services for OpenStack cloud environment. The ISO images for virtu virtual machines and metadata are stored here and they can be discovered, registered and retrieved by the users. For example, if you have many virtual machines which are working in a same manner, you can create an image of one of these virtual machines, then use it as a template for other virtual machines. If you want to take backups of data stored on your server, you can create server images, that is a copy of all the data server contains and store it at multiple locations. Then we have Horizon. It provides dashboard service, that is a web-based user interface for all the OpenStack services. With this, 
web graphical user interface, you can perform most operations on your cloud like launching a virtual machine, assigning IP addresses and setting access controls. Then we have Celometer, often known as Telemetry. It provides metering and monitoring services. It provides data about all the physical and virtual resources being used by the cloud. Based on this data, cloud providers can charge their customers. We can also create certain triggers using this data. Then we have Heat. It provides orchestration service. You need to create a template of how your infrastructure will be. When you load this template in Heat, your cloud is created. If you want to update your cloud, simply update the Heat template and your cloud infrastructure will be updated. Heat also provides an auto scaling service that is used along with the Celometer. For example, if data from Celometer shows that CPU utilization is more than 70% for 5 minutes, then a trigger can be fired which will make Heat auto scale the resources and add more front end web server. Now, if we take a look back at the conceptual architecture, we can see Heat, which is used for orchestration. We have Horizon, which provides graphical user interface to all the other projects. Then we have Keystone, which is used for authentication and authorization. In a similar manner, all the projects are interconnected with each other. Now, let us take a look at the logical architecture of OpenStack Cloud. No need to get afraid by looking at this diagram. These are all the projects we just studied, but just in depth. I am going to explain this only superficially, as going in depth would take hours. First of all, we have internet, using which we can access the horizon or dashboard which provides graphical user interface for all the other services. For communication between various projects or between users and projects, each project will expose one or more HTTP or RESTful interfaces. REST stands for Representational State Transfer and it is a way of providing interoperability between computer systems on the internet. REST is used over SOAP because REST requires less bandwidth and hence it is suitable for internet usage. So RESTful APIs are used for communication between different projects and users and the projects. But when different components of the same project want to communicate, they use a message queue for communication. At the bottom, we have Keystone or Authentication and Authorization Center, which authenticates, that is, decides whether a user is a valid user or not, and authorizes, that is, checks whether the valid user is allowed to access that specific service or not. If you think that you have learned something useful from my video, then please like it, share it and if you want me to make videos on related topics, please leave some comments down below. Thanks for watching.